Lots of little kids say they want to be an astronaut when they grow up, but I was one of the only ones who actually did it. Hi everyone, I'm Marisol from Dallas. Please like and subscribe. Okay, so I wasn't technically an astronaut yet, but I was getting close. I've gone to space camp every summer since I was little. While the other kids were doing basic algebra, I was solving complex calculus equations just like the engineers at NASA. My heroes were Valentina Tereshkova and Sally Ride, two of the first women to go to space. I wanted to follow in her footsteps and inspire other girls one day. My parents thought I was strange for only eating freeze-dried space food, but I didn't care. Maybe I wasn't an astronaut yet, but no one could say I wasn't living the lifestyle. I had to hide the food, though, because my little brother was always chasing our cat around the house and squirting her with space ketchup. Rodrigo, that only works when there's no gravity. My dad didn't approve of my dream to go to space. He wanted me to aim for somewhere more practical like a courthouse or a hospital. But being a lawyer or a doctor just wasn't my dream. One day at school, I saw some students gathering around the bulletin board. I pushed through to see what they were looking at. It was a flyer for space cadet tryouts? My heart leapt into my throat. This was exactly the opportunity I'd been searching for. The tryouts were this weekend at the Space Center in Houston. Now I just had to convince my dad to let me go. Absolutely not, it's out of the question. But dad, an opportunity like this might only come along once in a lifetime. You need to focus on your studies. I have straight A's. You have chores to do. So if I get all my chores done before the weekend, you'll let me go? I could tell my dad was trying to think of another reason to say no, but I didn't give him a chance. Thanks, dad. I mowed the lawn, trimmed the hedges, and vacuumed and scrubbed the floors faster than I ever had before. The house was spotless. But every time I told dad I was finished, he just gave me a longer list of chores. Oh, so annoying. If he thought I was gonna let a little housework stand in my way, he was sorely mistaken. Finally, I'd finished everything. My dad looked up from his newspaper and handed me another piece of paper. Dad, come on, I've done everything you've asked. This is getting ridiculous. Look at what you're holding. It was a bus ticket to Houston. This doesn't mean I approve, but a deal's a deal. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That Saturday, as the bus approached the Space Center, I watched the launch pad come into view on the horizon. It was incredible. A piece of history right in front of my eyes. And there was Mission Control. Once we got inside, I got into my uniform and glanced around at the other cadets. There were about a hundred of us. Most of them were boys. They looked tough, disciplined, almost like soldiers. But I was tough too, in my own way. I made my way towards one of the girls. Hey, is it okay if I sit here? Go for it. I'm Marisol, Jessa. This place is so cool. I can't believe I'm really here. No offense, but I'm not here to make friends. Sorry, I won't bug you anymore. Just then, an intimidating looking officer approached and a hushed silence fell on the cadets. My name is Commander McLean. I'll be your training officer. Out of everyone in this room, only 10 will make the cut for phase two of training. If you fail, you'll be leaving at noon. That made me a little nervous. It would be so embarrassing if I came all this way just to leave before lunchtime. Of the 10 who make the cut, only one will be chosen for the mission. Here at NASA, we only take the best of the best. And before I knew it, we were completing an obstacle course. A lot of the cadets had an advantage over me because they were taller and stronger, but I was smarter. I noticed on the climbing wall that the ropes were frayed. Most of the cadets grabbed the ropes to scale the wall, but I used the handholds instead. While I climbed, I glanced back to see the ropes break and a bunch of cadets crashed to the mat below. A boy was climbing right beside me and he winked at me. Who did he think he was? If he thought that was gonna distract me, he was wrong. I hit the ground running. The other cadets were coming up fast. Whoa, Jessa was way ahead of the rest of us. I pushed myself as hard as I could and I finished right behind her. Congratulations, you just made it to phase two. I stopped myself from jumping and cheering loudly but on the inside, I was throwing a party. I glanced around to check out who else made it to phase two. Some really tall and athletic cadets were still here, which wasn't surprising, and the boy who had winked at me. I was so excited and really wanted to chat with Jessa, or someone anyway. Here I was, in a room with nine other people who shared my passion for space exploration. But maybe Jessa was right. They were my competitors, and I needed to be serious if I was gonna be the top performer. Forget about everyone else and just focus on training Marisol. After lunch, the same boy winked at me again. I could feel myself blushing, but I was annoyed. I'm not here to make friends. 
Okay. Our next training exercises made the obstacle course look like a piece of cake. We had to master all kinds of skills, like working the life support systems, orbital mechanics, and space medicine. Thankfully, all my time practicing calculus equations gave me a huge leg up here. The next exercise was the one I'd been most excited to try, zero gravity training. We floated around the chamber like it was a sea without water. It was amazing. Be aware, your bodies are not yet used to the effects of zero G. Most of you will get space motion sickness. Sure enough, when I looked over at the boy who'd winked at me, his face turned green and he threw up. I didn't mean to, but it made me laugh. I caught the boy's eye and he grinned at me. Jessa was floating around like this was just another walk in the park to her. She was the only one who didn't get sick. During our next break, I decided to explore the Starship Gallery. There were a bunch of spacecraft and even a real moon rock on display. I thought I was alone, but then I noticed the boy checking out the lunar module. It's incredible, isn't it? I'm Nick. It really is. I'm Marisol. It's so wild to actually be here. I've been dreaming of this since I was two. My bedroom is covered in planets and stars and model rockets. I'm embarrassing myself, aren't I? <laughs> Your room sounds a lot like mine. I've been obsessed with space ever since my dad brought me my first telescope when I was little. I think he regrets it because all he talks about now is me becoming a lawyer or a doctor. He probably worries about you. This is a dangerous job. It's not that. He doesn't believe it's a realistic dream. Not for most people, maybe. But he didn't see how impressive you were in training earlier. It's nice to talk to someone who cares about space like I do. I felt Nick's fingertips touch mine. It gave me butterflies. Surrounded by all the spacecraft, in the dark with the little star lights on the wall, it was almost like we were really in space. Nick leaned in to kiss me, but at the last second I turned my head. I'm sorry, I really do want to, but I can't. This is my dream. I can't afford to get distracted. No, I totally get it. I was glad he took it so well. He really did seem like a great guy. Under different circumstances, I would have kissed him in a heartbeat. But this wasn't the time or place. You know this means I'm gonna do my best to beat you, right? I'd expect nothing less. Our break was over. Now it was time for something super cool. The Space Flight Simulator. It was awesome at first. It was so realistic that it was easy to forget we were on the ground. But then, an emergency alarm started to beep. Mission Control, we have a problem. There was an explosion in the service module. It ruptured oxygen tank number two. I redirected power to our primary oxygen tank, but then a second alarm started beeping. Red lights were flashing everywhere. There's a line ruptured in your primary oxygen tank. You're losing oxygen fast. I did my best not to panic. My hands were shaking. Wow, this was intense. All the cadets were scrambling to figure out how to solve the problem. Remember, only one of you will be chosen for the mission, but this is a group exercise. If you can't work together as a team, you won't survive. Jessa and I locked eyes. Marisol, can you calculate how much oxygen we have left? On it. Nick, I need you to shut down all non-critical systems to conserve energy. Copy that. At our current rate, we'll run out of oxygen in 10 hours. That's not enough time to complete our mission. I'm gonna try and bring us in for an emergency landing. All of us got to work, nervous and sweating, but we were in sync. It's too rocky. There's no safe place to land. You got this, Jessa. We believe in you. Even though it was just a simulator, I had to admit, it was scary. What if this happened on a real mission? That's what you're preparing for, Marisol. So if it does, you'll be ready. Suddenly, the emergency signals were silent. We all looked around at each other, breathless. Congratulations, cadets. You've just successfully executed an emergency landing. All of us cheered. I even gave Nick a hug. We really pulled together and overcame the odds. It made me stop seeing the other cadets as my competition. They were good people who wanted the same thing I did. And when one of us succeeded, we all did. Later, I was hanging out in the observation area overlooking the launch pad. The sun was setting outside and it cast a beautiful glow on the shuttle. Mind if I join you? Of course not. I'm sorry if I was rude earlier. The truth is, I was afraid if I opened up, it would make me vulnerable. And it's already hard enough, especially for girls. I know what you mean. You really had my back in the simulator. We're a team. When one of us succeeds, we all do. Friends? Friends. You know, I think you have a really good chance of being chosen. Really? But you're like the best pilot here. I can't do math like you can. Let's make a pact. 
No matter which of us wins, or if neither of us do, we'll still support each other. Deal. The next morning, it was time for the announcement. We gathered around and waited for Commander McLean. I think everyone was too nervous to chat. Finally, the commander approached. All of you did good work here. I want everyone to walk out those doors with their heads held high. But as I said, there can only be one. I tried so hard to keep it together, but I was dying to know who was chosen. Cadet Jessa, congratulations. You're our top performer and you'll be joining our crew for our next mission. I felt all the wind go out of my sails. Don't get me wrong, I was happy for Jessa, but I'd wanted this all my life. I had gotten so close, and now it was out of reach. Still, I told Jessa I'd support her, and I meant it. I gave her a big hug, and we promised to keep in touch. Nick and I exchanged numbers, too. When I got home, I looked around my room. Maybe it was time to grow up. I took down my space stuff and put it in a box. Then I decided to take one last look through my telescope. Orion and the Big Dipper were shimmering in the sky. It was so hard to say goodbye. What are you doing? <laughs> you were right. I should find something more realistic. Please, don't say I told you so. Oh, Marisol. I wasn't right. You were. What? Maybe being an astronaut isn't the most realistic goal, but that doesn't mean it's not achievable. This world needs dreamers. If anyone can make it happen, it's you. From that moment on, I never doubted my path again. I was going to give it my all, no matter what the odds were. And maybe, just maybe, one day I would inspire a little kid, just like my heroes inspired me. Looking into the sun is really painful to the eyes. But you know what's even more painful? Seeing cheerleaders posing and pouting in front of jocks. I just wanted to study in the gym, but I forgot there was an audition for the muse of this year's football game. Suddenly, I sneezed and everyone turned to me. Dude, there she is. Even the way she sneezed is so pretty. I think we found our muse. She's gonna be perfect for the team. The biggest brat in the universe, Candace, had a violent reaction. Excuse me, are you guys blind? This peasant is not even a cheerleader. And look at her messy hair and cheap clothes. But the point is, she's still the prettiest. Candace looked at me with murder in her eyes, and it was my signal to run. But she ran after me and pulled me by my shirt. You're just our stupid maid's daughter. Always remember that. I reached for her arm and twisted it away. At least I'm prettier than you. Always remember that. And I flipped my hair and ran again. I knew I was going to pay for saying that, but it was worth it. Hi, my name is Stellar, and I just wanted to have a peaceful life with my mom. But it's impossible if you live with billionaire brats from hell. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. Mom had been working for a super rich lady, Mrs. Branson, since I was a kid. In return, she gave us a cottage next to the mansion and paid for my tuition at a private school. She might sound like a generous lady, but she actually did all of this because no maid could put up with her besides mom. She was mean and rude, and I hated her to the core. She had twins my age, Candace and Julian, and they were as bad as their mom. Thankfully, Julian had left for boarding school seven years ago, but I still had Candace to deal with. Candace had always been jealous of me because I was prettier and smarter than her. And because of what happened in the gym yesterday, she forced me to do all her homework. One night while I was studying, I heard loud voices outside. I wanted to check what it was and saw Mrs. Branson yelling at mom in front of her guests. How dare you serve us with silver utensils? Where are the gold ones? Did you steal them? She made us feel poor for a second, mom. It was traumatizing. As mom was apologizing nonstop, Mrs. Branson just kept on humiliating her in front of everyone. I so wanted to punch her fake lips, but mom gave me a look to behave. I didn't do anything then, but the next day I sneaked into the kitchen and sprinkled the hottest chili powder in the world onto their soup. A few minutes later, I was grinning from the balcony as both witches ran around the mansion with burning tongues. I felt so pleased with myself, but mom was furious. Mrs. Branson fired the cook because of what you did. I have no idea what you're talking about, Mom. I know it was you. How many times do I have to tell you to stay out of trouble? But those two are just horrible. We have to put up with them at least until you graduate high school. There are just a few months left. Please. Ugh, fine. But a few days later, Mom fell down the stairs and broke her ankle. 
She couldn't walk for some months, so I had to take her place, which only made Candace happier because she could boss me around even more. She made me do the stupidest tasks, like painting hearts on her nails and braiding her boyfriend's long hair. And when Mrs. Branson informed me that Julian was coming back, I just knew that things were about to get worse. After cleaning up his room, I felt so exhausted that I sat down on his couch to rest for five minutes, and I dozed off. When I woke up, I saw a guy with the most beautiful green eyes staring right at me. Was I dreaming? He looked so majestic. Hello, Buttface. Did you miss me? Buttface? That's what Julian used to call me. Oh, you're here. Sorry, I got so tired that I fell asleep. Seems like you were having a very interesting dream. Was it about me? Yeah. I dreamed that I was punching your liver. Still feisty as ever. Why are you in a maid's uniform? Where's your mom? She had a small accident, so I'm replacing her. Temporarily. Now, if you'll excuse me, I still have a lot to do. Later that night, as I was serving their dinner, I noticed Julian's eyes following me everywhere. He even purposefully brushed his hand against mine. What was up with this jerk? And why had he turned out so fine? One night, I saw Mrs. Branson throwing out one of her branded bags in the trash just because it had a small stain. After making sure that everyone was asleep, I sneaked out and took it. But when I told mom, she got so scared. What if she finds out that you stole it? You know that woman, she'll make our lives hell. Technically, I didn't steal it because she'd already thrown it out. If the bag was alive, I'm sure it would prefer to be in the hands of a cute owner instead of rotting in the garbage, right? I will never win against you. Exactly. The next day at school, we were in the middle of an exam when suddenly the girls started squealing. We all turned to the door to see Julian peeking with a smile. What was he doing here? Suddenly, he waved at me and blew me a kiss. My tummy did a weird flip. As soon as he left, Candace elbowed me in the ribs. My brother's just fooling around, so stop dreaming. You're not his type. Oh, trust me, he's not my type either. It didn't matter even if he was. I had to stay away from him because being involved with Julian meant trouble. One day, while he was working out in the living room, he suddenly called for me. Do you think my muscles look hard enough, or should I work out more? To be honest, they were a work of art, but there was no way I'd tell him that. I think you should get a life. Sir, he just grinned at me and laid down on his back. He then asked me to hold down his feet and started doing crunches. I held my breath when I realized how close our lips were when he sat up. He was definitely doing this on purpose. Excuse me, but are you flirting with me? Am I that obvious? If you think you can add me to your list of girlfriends, you're mistaken. You're really amusing. Too bad you lost those chubby cheeks. I can't call you butt face anymore. Should I call you sweet face now? Wow, that is so cringy. What school did you go to? Wattpad High? He just chuckled and reached for my cheeks to pinch them. You're so cute, especially when you blush. It's a blush of hatred. Anyway, I still have a mountain of laundry to do, so bye. I left before things could get weirder. I did my best to avoid him at school, but he was always doing silly things to grab my attention. And one of my friends suddenly started pestering me. Hey girl, I saw that hottie from the other class flirting with you yesterday. Are you guys like a thing? Ew, yuck, no, I don't date players. Okay, that's amazing. Maybe I'll ask him out then. I suddenly found myself grabbing her by her hair. Don't even think about it. My friend was totally surprised by my behavior and so was I. I realized that I was actually having a crush on Julian, but I would never admit it, ever. A week later, Mrs. Branson hosted a grand New Year's Eve party at the mansion, and I helped the kitchen staff serve the food. I couldn't help noticing Julian staring at me the whole evening. It made me feel excited for some reason. While I was washing the dishes, someone suddenly breathed down my neck. Wanna get out of here? Your mom's gonna kill me. So you're scared? Where's that fearless little girl who used to kick my butt? And I was sold. We sneaked out and slipped into a sports car. Where are we going? Wherever fate is taking us. I was so confused when he brought me to a grass field. Why are we here exactly? You'll have to wait for it. As we sat on the car's hood and waited for whatever it was, we started talking. Why do you like racing so much? It's too dangerous. Racing makes me feel like I'm flying, like I'm alive and free. 
How about you? Do you still want to become a nurse? Of course. Remember when you stole my stethoscope when we were kids? It was just so cute how you ran around and listened to random people's heartbeats and tummies. Oh look, there it is. Suddenly, the night sky was filled with the most spectacular fireworks. I remember you wanted to see those New Year's fireworks so badly once when we were kids. But you missed it because Candace and I locked you up in a bathroom. Yep, you both are horrible creatures. I'm sorry about that. I was a dumb kid. I felt butterflies as we watched the fireworks in silence. I closed my eyes and just enjoyed the colors behind my eyes. When I opened them again, I saw him staring at me. He was leaning in closer when suddenly my phone started to ring. It was Mrs. Branson. Your mom is calling. We need to go back. Can we make it in 10? Try me. He winked at me before stepping on the pedal, and the next thing I knew, I was screaming as he drove like a maniac. The party wasn't over yet when we got back home. As we sneaked in from the back, we suddenly saw Mrs. Branson walking towards us. Just then, Julian pushed me down to my knees. Why can't you find it? Are you blind? I immediately got what he meant, so I started crawling around pretending to find something. Stellar, I've been looking for you. What are you doing here? I dropped my ring, Mom, and I'm asking her to look for it. Mrs. Branson seemed to believe us. I was so relieved. But later that night, as I was clearing the mess, I almost fell back in fright to see her standing behind me. Do you really think that I have no idea what you're up to? I, I don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. Stop with your acting, Stellar, and don't forget your place in this house. You're a maid, just like your mom, and that's all you'll ever be. Stay away from my son. I'd already expected this to happen, and I started avoiding Julian as much as possible. I couldn't afford to get us thrown out while mom was unwell. But it was hard, especially when I found out Julian had fallen really sick. After making sure that mom was asleep, I sneaked into the mansion and into his room one night. He seemed to be having a really high fever, and he looked so vulnerable as he slept. I stayed by his side for hours, but just as I was about to leave, he suddenly pulled me down towards him and kissed me. I got lost for a few seconds, but then I quickly pulled away. That was a mistake. I shouldn't even be here. It's not a mistake. I really like you, Stellar, and I hope you feel the same. Stop liking me, Julian. We won't work out. I'm not the girl for you. I won't fit into your world, and your family will never approve of us. Please stop thinking about other people. Just tell me how you feel. I chose not to answer him and walked out, but I couldn't stop thinking about him. A few days later, Candace and her friends were having a pool party, and I went out to serve them drinks. I saw Julian was with them, and one of the girls was literally all over him. The sight made my blood boil. I slammed down the tray and turned to Julian. Excuse me, sir, but can you please come to the kitchen for a moment? I need to show you something. He looked confused and followed me. What is it? I grabbed a tray and tapped it on his head. Stars, can you see them? I can only see a jealous girl, but you're the one who told me we won't work, Stellar. So that's it. Now you suddenly don't have feelings for me? You're just a player, Julian. One day you're kissing me, the next day you're flirting with some... Just then, he gently pushed me against the wall and kissed me. And this time, I kissed him back. I couldn't stay away from him anymore, and we began dating in secret. We started sneaking out at night and driving around, and we had the best nights of our lives. But then one day, he looked at me seriously and said, I'm tired of seeing you secretly, Stellar. I just want to let the world know that I'm dating an amazing girl like you. But I'm just a maid, and I'm sure it will be a huge problem with your family. I know it's not going to be easy, but I'll find a way. I just need you to trust me. I do trust you. A week later, Julian's dad came back from abroad, and Mrs. Branson held a huge party for him. During the event, I looked around for Julian, but he seemed way too busy with his guests and didn't look my way once. I didn't think too much of it until Mrs. Branson stepped on the grand staircase in the hall and asked for everyone's attention. Since we're all gathered here tonight, I can't wait to share some amazing news. My son, Julian, and our business partner's daughter, Casey, are engaged. Cheers to the lovely couple. I stared at Julian in complete shock as he joined his mom with the girl who'd been flirting with him by the pool. And he looked so happy. How could he do this to me? Feeling dazed, I was leaving the room in tears when suddenly, Candace stepped in front of me with a smirk. 
Oh, I warned you. You're not his type. Not every Cinderella gets her prince charming. Just then, I turned red with rage. I was still holding a tray of appetizers, and I slammed it in Candace's face. Everyone gasped and stared at me, and I left as fast as I could. I ran back to our cottage and started packing our things. We have to leave, Mom. But why? What's happening, sweetie? I can't stay here. Not another minute. We'll be thrown out anyway, so we might as well go ourselves. I cried as I told her everything, and she started helping me pack. As the cab drove us away from that mansion, Mom took my hand. We should have left years ago, but I was too weak. I just let us suffer without doing anything. What will happen to us now? No, Mom. You're so strong for putting up with everything for me. Don't worry. We're gonna get through this together. We had enough savings to rent a cheap apartment, and I also sold the branded bag I'd taken from the trash. It was actually worth a small fortune. With some money to go by, we both started looking for jobs. Mom fully recovered soon and started working as a hotel maid, while I worked as a waitress. I also applied for a scholarship to a nursing school, and luckily, I got in. I studied and worked hard for five years and was finally an intern at a huge hospital. One day, I found a bouquet of roses in my hospital locker, and I hated myself for wishing it was from Julian, but it wasn't. It was a patient I'd taken care of some time ago, Enrique. He admitted he liked me and asked me out. Enrique was charming and sweet, but I told him I was too busy for love. But boy, was he persistent. He kept showing up and asking me out in the funniest ways. And after months, I finally decided to give him a chance. One evening, as I was stepping out of my apartment to meet Enrique, I bumped straight into someone and apologized. When I looked up, I saw that it was Julian. What? What are you doing here? Are you going out on a date? You look lovelier than ever. Are you freaking kidding me? You're not even ashamed to face me after what you did? And now you're flirting with me? Just wow. I wonder what your wife would have to say about that. I didn't marry her. I didn't want to spend my life being miserable. I also cut ties with my family. Do I look like I care? It's been five years, Julian. Please, just get lost. Before he could say another word, I walked away, shaking with rage. I wondered if he was telling the truth. But even so, he broke my heart in front of everyone, and I could never forgive him for that. Julian had somehow gotten a hold of my number, and he kept texting me to meet him once, but I kept ignoring him. One day at the hospital, we received a patient who'd been in a bad car accident, and when I looked at the patient chart, my heart leapt into my throat. It was Julian. I rushed to his room and took his hand as tears streamed down my cheeks. He suddenly opened his eyes and started talking. I tried to calm him down, but he wouldn't stop. You have to listen to me, Stellar. Mom threatened to put your mom away in jail for stealing if I didn't break up with you. I knew she really meant it. So I agreed to do something that would make you hate me and drive you far away. I was young and weak, and I thought I was doing the right thing. But now I've cut off my family and made something of myself. And there's no point to anything if I don't have you in my life. Gosh, you wanted my attention? You have it. Just shut up and be strong for me right now, okay? Only if you say you love me, because I do. I'll see how I feel after a few dates. So you better get well soon, you moron. I bent down and kissed him on the lips, and his blood pressure shot up from excitement. I was running through the rain trying to get home as quickly as possible when I noticed my crush James walking onto the school grounds. I didn't want him to see me like this. I was soaked to the bone, looking like a drowned rat. But I had to know what he was up to. What if he was breaking into the school? I decided to follow him. And at one point, I swear, he turned around and looked right at me. I didn't know if I was seeing things, but it even looked like he smiled at me. Wait, did he want me to follow him? Suddenly, I felt brave. I was going to tell him how I felt. The moment I'd waited for my whole life had arrived. But then I saw him climbing into the tornado shelter, and that should have been my first warning not to keep following him, because things were about to get super weird. Before I unleash my crazy story onto you, click like and subscribe to stay up to date with all the madness that my story animated has in store for you. Okay, so there I was, climbing into a tornado shelter after my crush, with absolutely no plan of what I'd do next. 
I was acting purely on impulse, and it felt amazing. I felt sure he knew I'd climbed in after him, but I couldn't see anything, so I used the flashlight on my phone and realized he'd already gone down the stairs. The rain was really pouring now, so I closed the lid. The last thing I wanted was to flood the shelter. Not on a special night like tonight. I'd never been this close to James before. Just the two of us alone. Except we weren't alone. As soon as I closed the lid, I heard a girl's voice. No! I started panicking and decided this had been a stupid idea. I pushed the lid to climb back out, but it wouldn't open. No matter how hard I pushed it, it didn't budge. Oh my gosh. I was stuck. If it had just been me and James down there, it would have been quite exciting. But suddenly I heard a kissing sound and I realized my worst nightmare had just come true. I was stuck in a tornado shelter with my crush and his girlfriend by the sounds of things. I didn't want them to know I was there, like some creepy stalker, so I tried to keep as quiet as possible. I could hear them laughing and then the girl said, Did anyone see you come in here? I hope we didn't get caught. And James replied, No, I don't think so. Oh no, wait, there was a girl from my school, but she wouldn't say anything. She's such a loser. At that, I had to cover my face. I wanted to cry. It felt like he'd shoved a knife through my heart. And then I felt angry. I had to get out of there. This was literally the most embarrassing situation to ever be in. And what would my parents think when they found out? I gave the lid one final push, but I pushed too hard. The next moment, I lost my footing and was rolling down the stairs. I landed with a thump and blacked out for a second. When I opened my eyes, James and his girlfriend were standing over me. They didn't even ask me if I was okay. James just looked down at me and said, Did you follow me here? What are you playing at? Then he turned to his girlfriend and said, Come on, babe, let's bounce. Then they just left me lying there and headed up the stairs. I was about to tell them that we were trapped down there, but they'd soon discover it for themselves. I could hear James bashing on the lid of the shelter, but obviously it wouldn't open. And then he shouted down to me and asked if I'd done this and if I thought it was funny. No, James, I did not find this funny. I wanted to shout up at him. Gosh, what would he say if he knew how much I wished I were his girlfriend and not that dumb blonde girl? Then he started shouting about how he had to get out ASAP because the next day was his big football game that was going to guarantee him a scholarship to a top college. He said he had to get it, otherwise he'd be stuck in this stupid town forever. Oh no, this was a disaster and it was only just the beginning. I sat up and looked around with my flashlight on my phone and realized there was literally nothing down there except for some sandbags and an old scratchy blanket that looked like a thousand bugs might be living in it. And then I realized I was shivering, like properly freezing cold. My phone was on 10%. Not that it mattered. There was absolutely no signal down there anyway. I didn't even have a bottle of water on me, and by the looks of things, James and his girlfriend had nothing either. Oh, man. I held my breath as they came down the stairs. I was so scared of what they'd say to me. They were arguing, and James's girlfriend came right up to me and said, This is all your fault. You've ruined everything. Truly, that felt like the most awkward moment of my entire life. James told her to try and calm down, and I learned her name was Amy. She must have gone to another school because I'd never seen her before. Neither of them had signal either, and soon they started screaming for help. I didn't want to tell them it was pointless. The rain was so loud. No one would hear us even if they were right above us. Eventually, I told them I was sorry, even though it wasn't my fault. I lied and told them I'd been trying to shelter from the rain because I'd forgotten my umbrella, but Amy didn't buy it. She said, yeah, right. You're clearly a stalker. Do you get kicks out of watching other people making out or something? James said you're a loser and he wasn't joking. Look at you. If I hadn't already been underground, I'd have asked the ground to swallow me up. No one had ever been so mean to me before. After that, it was really uncomfortable and all of us were in a bad mood. 
Soon, it became obvious we'd all have to spend the night down there. So I found a corner as far away from Amy as possible and lay down. I was still shivering and thought about using the insect-infested blanket, but Amy had already grabbed it. There was no way I'd fall asleep. I was so thirsty, and even though the shelter luckily had a small toilet, there was no sink, which meant no running water. I'd have drunk the rain earlier if I knew this was going to happen. I covered my ears because I was afraid I'd hear them kissing, and eventually I must have fallen asleep because the next moment I found myself waking up to hearing a rustling sound. I looked over at Amy and even though I couldn't see anything, I knew she was eating something. I could hear her. I couldn't believe she had food with her and wasn't sharing it. Did James know? I should have said something, but I was too scared. I'd already caused enough trouble. Finally, morning came and by then my phone was at 2%. Soon, I wouldn't even know what time it was. I was bursting for the toilet, so I went to use it and of course, Amy shouted at me and said my pee was too loud and had woken her up. Then I noticed there was a light switch outside the toilet. I clicked on it, not expecting it to work, and suddenly the whole shelter was flooded with light. Amy quickly pulled the blanket up and told me to look away. Oh my gosh, were they not wearing clothes? Then Amy just <laughs> laughed and said everyone knows that body heat is the best way to survive in cold weather. Ew! Once they got dressed, I realized how pretty Amy was, and it really annoyed me. How could I have thought James would ever be interested in someone like me when he had Amy? I ran up the stairs and tried to push the lid again, but then I just sat there waiting for people to arrive at school. Then I'd scream my head off. Plus, I didn't want them to look at me. I felt so insecure about my running clothes and I hadn't even shaved my legs. I didn't want James noticing. I could hear the school bell and feet walking over us, but no one heard me scream. How long would we be down here? James was complaining about being hungry and Amy too, but I knew Amy had eaten something in the night. She was a liar. We started looking around the place to see if we could find anything, and James suddenly sounded happy. Under the sandbags, he'd found some old bottles of water. The water looked disgusting, but I'd have drunk anything by that point. Both James and I downed like a liter each, but Amy refused. Suit yourself, I thought. Then about an hour later, I started getting a weird pain in my stomach. Oh no. There was no toilet paper. This couldn't be happening. I had to run and almost puked my guts up. And I wasn't the only one. James raced in after me and at one point, we were both lying on the floor taking it in turns to vomit. Not exactly what I had in mind for our first date together. That water must have been 20 years old or something. Amy got seriously annoyed and even tried to drag James out of the bathroom. Was she jealous? And then I noticed an empty soda bottle behind the toilet. Had Amy secretly had a bottle of soda and not told us? How selfish. That first day seemed to fly by. Most of it spent in the bathroom, of course. By the end of the day, I'd almost lost my voice from screaming for help. Would we be stuck down there forever? And then nighttime came, and James and Amy got into a huge fight. Secretly, it made me happy to see them argue. James deserved better. He was super upset that he'd missed his football game, but Amy just kept saying he could go to college with her and then they'd never be apart. And James got really angry angry and said he didn't want to go to her college. Then the whole room went silent. It was tense. I didn't know what to do, so I just stayed quiet and pretended to be asleep. A while later, I heard someone saying my name. I opened my eyes and could see James. He said he could hear my teeth chattering and that I should come and share their blanket. But if Amy woke up and saw me, she'd go mental. I didn't care about her though. James was actually being kind of nice to me for the first time in my life. I couldn't lose my chance. So I climbed under the blanket next to him. Our legs were almost touching. And of course, that woke Amy up. And when she saw me, I thought she was going to explode. James wanted to keep the peace, so he snuggled into her and left me lying there all alone. But I couldn't stop thinking about the moment we just shared. And during the night, I decided to try and get closer to him. I rolled over until I was almost right at his back. 
But then I heard something. They were kissing. I was watching them, wishing it was me he was kissing. I couldn't stop staring, but suddenly Amy opened her eyes and caught me watching them. She told James, but James said I was asleep and that they should get some sleep too. But James didn't go back to sleep. He waited until Amy was snoring next to him, and then he reached out his hand and grabbed mine. I felt like my heart was going to explode, and I so badly wanted to get closer to him, but it was too risky. There was always the next night, right? So we fell asleep holding hands, and I couldn't stop smiling. In the morning, though, I was lying there all alone. When Amy got up to go to the bathroom, I smiled at James, and he smiled back. But then Amy Amy came out and saw me and said, Freak, stop staring at us like that. I thought James would stick up for me, but he didn't. He was acting like nothing had happened between us. The rest of that day was kind of weird. We just sat around quietly. At one point, James almost fainted. I mean, we were all starving. I was so weak, I just kept napping. And when I woke up from one of my naps, James and Amy were eating biscuits. Where did they get them from? I could almost feel the saliva pouring out of my mouth and I assumed Amy would offer me one, but she didn't. They ate them all. And after that, I didn't speak to either of them. I was so mad. I couldn't sleep that night because my stomach was rumbling so loudly. But once Amy had fallen asleep, James reached into his pocket and handed me a biscuit. I swear I almost kissed him right there and then. This was why I had a crush on him. He was actually a good guy, even if he had a demon for a girlfriend. For the next few nights, we got into a bit of a routine. After Amy fell asleep, we'd lie there and hold hands. And one night, James came right up to me and I could tell he was about to kiss me. But Amy started murmuring in her sleep and he quickly moved over to her and held her. It drove me crazy. After we'd been down there for like six days, things were really starting to smell. The toilet, my clothes, it was nasty. And still, James and I hadn't shared a kiss. But for some reason, Amy still looked good. That day I noticed she didn't get up. It was like she'd given up on shouting for help, but it bothered me. Why should she get to sit there and chill? So I told her I'd just seen a huge spider and I've never seen her run so fast. She raced up the stairs to where James was and I immediately went over to where she'd been sitting. I just had this feeling she was hiding something, like another pack of biscuits. But I found something much bigger. Under where she'd been sitting was a loose part of the floorboard. I lifted it up and couldn't believe what I was seeing. There was so much stuff down there, beauty products, food, a battery pack, even clothes. Oh my gosh, what? was going on? I didn't have time to put the floorboard back before James appeared to find the spider. I whispered that Amy had been hiding stuff. James came running over and pulled out her phone. He knew her password and typed it in quickly. Then he saw some messages that said things like, I need to find a way to stop him going off to college. I'm scared he'll leave me. As he was reading them and I was eating one of her secret chocolate bars, she came down the stairs. What are you doing? She screamed, but it was too late. We caught her red-handed. She tried to grab her phone back from James, but he wouldn't give it to her. Eventually, she broke down and said that she didn't want James to leave her for college college. So she planned this, but she had only meant for them to be stuck down there for one or two days. Then she said I'd ruined it all by turning up and getting them locked in here. But there was something else. While she'd been talking, I'd been digging around and inside a pair of her socks was a key. I held it in my hands and watched as James went crazy at Amy. He said he couldn't believe he dated such a psycho and that she'd officially ruined his life. Then the best part of all, he turned to me and apologized. He said he was sorry he treated me so badly, but actually he'd realized how amazing I was and had enjoyed our sneaky hand-holding sessions while Amy slept. At that, Amy went berserk. She ran towards me and I quickly jumped away. Then I watched as she dug around inside her secret hiding place. Looking for this, I asked. 
swinging the key in my hand. Then I turned to James and said, she's been hiding this key the whole time. Before Amy could get to it, I ran up the stairs and undid the lock. James was right behind me and we both climbed out and collapsed onto the ground laughing. We were free. As Amy climbed out, I thought she was going to kick me or something, but she just stormed off. And James shouted after her, that's right, keep walking. I never want to see your face again. Finally, she was gone. And James turned to me and gave me the biggest kiss ever. We could see the janitor running towards us. And before all hell broke loose with our parents about where we'd been for the past week, James asked for my number. And now we're about to go on our first proper date. The worst week of my life just became the best week. Hi, I'm Princess Aurora from Monaco, and I was born to the most awful king and queen ever. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I'm sure everyone thought I was the luckiest little girl in the world, but I didn't. The royal palace was a prison. My only playmates were the maids, and I was never allowed to go beyond the palace walls. My parents always said the world outside was ugly and cruel. But look at these pictures, Daddy. These places look beautiful. Why won't you ever let me see them? Sweetheart, you'll understand when you're older. Why can't you tell me now? Why are you keeping me here? You won't even send me to school. You have the best tutors in the world, darling. But I have no friends. Of course you do. Us. Jeez. Who wants to be friends with their parents? Once when I was eight, I was reading on my bed when suddenly someone crawled out from under it and I fell off in shock. I looked up and my eyes met those of a boy my age. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. If you tell on me, I'll be in so much trouble. I won't, Pinky swear. Now tell me where you've come from. He was one of the maid's kids and he'd sneaked into the palace and he had the most amazing things to tell me about the outside world. Have you ever been on a roller coaster? My mom took me once. It goes so fast, you want to throw up. It's awesome, like you're flying. I'd like to fly. Ooh, and that same day, I ate cotton candy. What's that? It's like a cloud of sugar. It just melts in your mouth. Oh, wow. He wanted to see the palace, so we tiptoed down the hallway. But just then we heard voices and we crawled into a vent. And soon enough, my maids discovered I wasn't in my room and everyone was going bonkers looking for me. The two of us couldn't stop laughing. When it looked like the hallway was clear, the boy crawled out first and he was instantly grabbed by some guards. Hey, stop it, he's my friend. He's not supposed to be here. He could be dangerous. He's not, let him go but they took him away and I stormed off to my parents who started crying as they hugged me. Mom, Dad, I'm fine. I was right here. Now tell those stupid cards to let my friend go. What friend? There was someone inside the palace? Yes, a boy, but he's nice, I promise. My parents said they'd look into the matter, but the next day I found out that the boy's mom was gone. What did you guys do to the maid and her son? Did you fire her? Or did you throw them in the dungeon? Of course not. She just decided it was best for her to leave. You're such a liar, Dad. I need one friend and you took him away. You just don't want me to be happy. And I ran off in angry tears. I was convinced my parents had done something awful to them. I'd never even asked his name. And after that, I decided that I wasn't letting them rule over my life anymore. The next day, when my etiquette teacher was going on and on about the right way to hold a fork, I suddenly jumped onto the table like a monkey, snatched it from her, and started scratching my back with it. What are you doing, princess? That's so uncivilized. Why should I be civilized when I live in a cage? I'm no better than a gorilla in a zoo. I grabbed a banana and started chewing on it loudly. That's enough. Please, get down this minute. I threw the banana peel smack at her face. My parents were not happy when she quit, but I didn't stop there. I refused to study from my tutors. I wouldn't eat anything but junk food, and I refused to shower for weeks. Yo, what's up, friends? How about you read me a bedtime story? Good God, that smell. Please, honey, take a shower. What? It's not that bad. Okay, I've had enough. Let's talk. What do you want, Aurora? I want to go to school and have friends. To my shock, 
dad actually agreed, but on the condition that I would wear a wig and a mask. Why? No one knows what I look like. We have to be extra careful. Fine, but no bodyguards. You don't want anyone to know who I am, right? Then let me be a nobody. And I couldn't believe it when the palace gates actually opened for me. And I was on my way to school. It was the most exciting day of my life. As I walked down the school hallway, I could see people giving me weird looks. When I entered the classroom, I noticed a bunch of kids gathered around a pretty girl who saw me and started laughing. Great, I wasn't gonna have an easy time making friends looking like this. Later at recess, I observed what the other kids were doing and saw them making their way to the food counter. I walked over straight to the lunch lady when suddenly someone called out to me, the girl from my class. What do you think you're doing, weirdo? Get in line. What do you mean? See this line? Get your butt at the end of it. But why would I do that? Because you have to wait for your turn? What are you, some moron or daddy's spoiled princess? Uh, daddy's spoiled princess. Well, high five, girl. My dad's really rich too and spoils me rotten. But even I have to wait in line. Oh, I see. But I'm pretty sure my dad's richer than yours. As I turned to walk away, the girl suddenly lunged at my mask. And the second she ripped it off my face, someone pulled her away and picked me up. I looked around in horror to see 10 bodyguards in plain clothes surrounding us. Everyone in the cafeteria was staring in stunned silence. Princess Aurora, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Now put me down. And just like that, it was my last day of school. My parents said there was no way they could send me without security and it was impossible for me to hide who I was. I just stayed in my room for the next two days and gave up on school. But the next day, Dad had some important guests for dinner, and when I joined them, everyone was staring at me. Um, Aurora, darling, why are you wearing a mask? I just don't want anyone to see my face, Mom. Like, ever. But see, this hole I cut in my mask, I can drink with a straw. And I started slurping loudly on the soup. And from that day on, I refused to take the mask off in front of people. As I grew older, my parents expected me to go with them to boring ceremonies and parties. And no matter how much they begged, the mask always stayed on. Why are you doing this? There's so much speculation in the media about what you're hiding behind the mask. People think you're ugly or crazy. I didn't care. I didn't have control over anything in my life. But this, I could do. This was my act of rebellion. Soon after, on my 17th birthday, my parents called me into their room one day and dropped a bombshell on me. We have some really important guests coming this week, and one of them is Prince Fardling. You need to make a good impression on him, so you will not wear your mask, please. Why? We, ahem, uh, <clears throat> well, we were hoping you two would get married one day. I stared at them. And then I laughed so hard I fell off my chair. You, <laughs> you think I'm gonna marry someone whose name is Prince Farting? <laughs> it's Fartling. I think she's actually gone crazy. I'm the one who's crazy? You're the one telling me you've decided who I'll marry. No one has decided anything, but you will give him a chance. The marriage could be good for our country's relationship. And do you care about what's good for me? That has always come first. How can you even say that? My entire life, you've never cared about what I want. I'm so tired of this. You're a princess, Aurora, a princess. Everything isn't about you. Being royalty comes with certain obligations. Nothing is about me, and I hate being a royal princess. The next few days, my parents and I gave each other the silent treatment. But sure enough, the guests arrived soon, and I was ordered to come down dressed up for the welcome dinner without my mask. Well, I had other plans. I knew it was a busy night at the palace with most of the guards at the main entrance. So I climbed out my window and ran away. I couldn't stay there another minute. I was literally dancing down the street when suddenly I took my mask off and threw it in the trash. All of Monaco knew me as the weird masked princess, but hardly anyone knew my real face. It was the best disguise. But as it started to get darker, I decided to look for a hotel for Just then, a dark figure came running at me and snatched my phone out of my hand. So 
Doran didn't know, I was trained in martial arts. I had him screaming on the ground in pain, and then he ran away like a scared rabbit. Suddenly, I heard someone behind me. Wow, that was... Hey, no, don't hit me. I'm harmless. I saw that it was a boy my age. Okay, okay, I'll spare you, but only if you find my place to stay for the night. Why? Where's your house? Why are you out of all so late? Do you always ask so many questions? Just find me a place, man. Fine. What's your budget? What do you mean? I mean, how much money can you spend on a hotel? I don't have money. Then how are you going to pay for a hotel? The government will pay for it, I guess. Did you just run away from a mental asylum? No, I didn't. Listen, I'm a tourist, okay? And someone stole my bag and all my money. And I don't know my way around the city. But just for tonight, okay? You gotta figure something out tomorrow. Yes, yes, I will. No, I didn't catch your name. Oh, 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 oh. that he lived with his parents in a really small house. And then he led me to a dinghy shed outside and said I could sleep there. Why can't I sleep inside? There's no space, and I'm not telling my parents I brought some crazy girl home. I'll just get you some blankets. Stay here. Are you sure the news is true? How could this happen? Yes, yes. I heard it straight from my cousin who's a palace guard. Princess Aurora has indeed run away, but they're keeping it very quiet. They've told the guests that she's really sick. They'll try to get her back before the news gets out. Poor girl. She must have been so miserable that she ran away. I hope she's safe. Hey, listen, uh, you can sleep in my room, but my parents better not find out. He helped me through the window into his room and told me that I could take his bed while he'd sleep on the floor. But once Andre switched the light off, I kept tossing and turning to get comfortable. Gosh, this mattress was so lumpy. Will you stop moving? All that creaking isn't letting me sleep. Sorry, sorry, I'll be quiet as a mouse now. I tried to stay still, but I just couldn't fall asleep. Hey, are you awake? Obviously, you're so noisy. Thanks for everything, Andre. You're welcome, Oreo. The next morning, Andre shook me away at 7 in the morning and said I could sleep in the school. I'll take you around the city after school. I want to stay a little longer. Now, you do have some plans, right? Yeah, of course. I'll call my family for some money and move on from here. Thank you, thank you. Andre even let me borrow some of your clothes. You want to get out of this room? I promise I'd stay outside and wait for him. After he left, I sneaked in too. As I walked down the hallway, it quickly hit me in the wall when I saw Andre by the lockers, with a pretty girl leaning against them. Hi, handsome. Are my assignments done? You'll have them in a few days, Elena. I've been busy. And you still haven't paid me for the last one. Don't you hurt everything, Snookum? Don't you trust me? Not really. How about you pay me for those first, and then you'll get the rest? Don't push your luck, Andre. You're cute, but not that cute. I don't have all the assignments by tomorrow. Well, you know how difficult I can make things for you. And with that, she left. What a witch! And what was she holding over Andre? When I met him outside school later, he said that he couldn't take me around the city because he had a lot of work to do. I told him I was happy to help, and we headed off to the local library. Oreo, you're a lifesaver. And you're really good at math. Andre, these assignments aren't yours, are they? I sneaked in and saw you with that girl. Why are you putting up with her? She seems awful. You got that right. But her dad freaking owns the school, and she knows I'm on scholarship. She could make her dad take it away from me. At first, it didn't seem like a bad deal anyway because she'd pay me for the assignments. But now, sometimes she doesn't. That's so unfair. Is it really that important for you to be at this school? Yeah, it is. Being here will give me some great chances for college scholarships. I need to do this for my family, Oreo. But sometimes, I just want to run away from everything. I know exactly how that feels. Suddenly, Andre leaned in a little closer. And for some reason, my heart skipped a beat. His eyes were such a lovely blue. He reached over and rubbed his thumb over my nose. 
<laughs> you got some ink. <laughs> you look like a clown. <laughs> I dipped my fingers into the ink bottle when he wasn't looking and smudged them all over his cheek. He reached for the bottle as I ran. And soon, the librarian threw us both out. The next day, I was hanging out on the bleachers at school when he joined me during recess, looking bummed out. She didn't pay you for the assignments, did she? No, she didn't. How much does she owe you? 520 euros. Wait, where are you going? To teach that girl a lesson? Oreo, no. You'll just make things worse. I promise, she won't think it has anything to do with you. Meet me outside. And before he could stop me, I put a handkerchief around my face and ran off inside the building. I spotted her walking by herself into the bathroom, and I stepped in after her and locked it. Hey, who, who are you? Your worst nightmare. Oh, open that door right now, or I'll scream. I'll cut your butt real hard if you even try. I'm not kidding. And I showed her my best karate do you want from me, psycho? How much money do you have in your wallet? I, I, I don't know. 600 euros? Okay, that's not a lot, but I'll take it. Ugh, you wait till my daddy finds out. I grabbed her wallet, locked the bathroom from the outside, and sprinted like a maniac. Andre was waiting for me outside the school, and he almost fell down laughing when I told him. Man, I wish I could have seen her face. You're crazy, Oreo. Good crazy. Now, I gotta keep my promise of showing you around. And we had the best day ever. We cycled all over the city, ate ice cream till our tummies hurt, and then he took me to an amusement park. I have to go on a roller coaster. I've never been on one. You're really missing out. Let's go. But as the roller coaster began to go up the slope, I started freaking out. Oh my God, oh my God, uh, I can't do this, Andre. Open your eyes, Oreo. Nuh uh, not happening. You can't do this with your eyes closed. Just take my hand, okay? I opened one eye and we were right at the top. I squeezed Andre's hand really tight. Oh, and if you feel scared, just scream! And boy, did I scream. And all my fear suddenly left me. This was the most freeing experience I'd ever had in my life. As we got off the ride laughing, Andre walked over to a guy and bought some pink fluff on a stick. What's this? Cotton candy. Never tried it? No, never. It's like a cloud of sugar, just melts in your mouth. My heart leapt to my throat. That's what the boy who'd sneaked into the palace had said all those years ago. Come to think of it, Andre did look like him. Could it be? But just then, I saw some royal guards burst in through the crowd. Oh my god! Don't ask any questions right now, okay? Just run! We dashed through the crowd and found a way out of a fence. I hopped onto Andre's bicycle and he pedaled away for dear life. He didn't stop till we were really far off and then we both collapsed to the ground. Is there something you want to tell me, Oreo? Okay, you got me. I'm Princess Aurora and I ran away from the palace. Andre, are you the boy who sneaked in once? Do you remember meeting me? Yeah, that was me. And of course I remember. Oh God, I was so worried about what had happened to you and your mom. What did my dad do? Nothing. My mom had started getting sick back then, and after that day, she just told her parents that she decided to find an easier job because she had me to take care of too. They understood, and they got her another job. And all this time, I thought Dad had done something horrible to them. Why did you run away, Aurora? What was the plan? There was no plan. I'm just so tired of all of it, Andre. My whole life, they just kept me away from this wonderful outside world. How could they? You know why your parents are like that, right? What? What do you mean? I think you need to go back and talk to them. Do I really have to go back? Well, you are a princess, and that does come with some obligations. Jeez, now you're starting to sound like them. Aurora, listen to me. You are amazing. You're beautiful and brave and smart, and you have the world at your feet. Don't waste it all by being angry. Think of all the great things you could do for so many people. Do you really think I could? I know you can. And suddenly, he put his hand under my chin and kissed me. It was the perfect first kiss. Later that night, I was in Andre's room while he was having dinner with his parents, when suddenly, his phone started buzzing nonstop. I peeked over at the screen, and the word princess caught my attention. And the text I read left me shook. Stop messing with me, Andre. If you really have pictures of the princess, send them to me now. 
I looked through his phone with trembling hands to find photographs of me sitting in the shed on my first night, stepping onto the roller coaster, more pictures around the city, what? Just then Andre walked in and his face turned white. Listen, Aurora, it it's not what you think it is. Oh, and what do I think? That you're a creep who's been secretly taking pictures of me? Were you going to sell them to the press? I, I do have a friend who works in a newspaper. And you thought that you'd make big money by telling everyone I ran away. Oh, and even better, you'd be showing the real face of the weird masked princess. They must have offered you a lot of money for that. Will you just listen? No, I will not. Our loud voices had made Andre's dad come upstairs, and he looked shocked to see me. Andre, who's your guest? I'm the Royal Princess of Monaco, and I'd really appreciate it if you took me back to the palace now. And I left without another word to Andre. I couldn't even stand his face. I thought my parents would be raging mad when I got back home, but instead they just hugged me and burst into tears. Aurora, we were so worried about you. Don't you ever scare us like that again, love? I just have to know, Dad. Why did you keep me inside all my life? Sweetheart, you have an evil aunt who kidnapped you when you were a baby. She wanted to get rid of you so that she'd be the next heir to the throne. Luckily, we found you, but she managed to escape. That's why we were always so paranoid. But we recently found out that she died, so the threat is gone. I'm sorry you were so miserable, Aurora, but I was only doing what I had to. And my marriage? I don't want to get married right now. We just wanted you to meet the prince. We would never force you to marry someone. I... I'm so sorry that I've been so angry and difficult, but I wish you just explained all this to me. And I've seen some of the world now, and I know you can't trust everybody, but it's still a wonderful place, and I want to see more of it. And you shall, my darling. The guests were still at the palace, and they were informed I was feeling well now. A grand ball was arranged two days later, and when I entered the hall without my mask, people seemed to be stunned by my beauty. I was having a great time dancing when mom called me aside and said that I had a visitor. I stepped out into the hall to find Andre? What are you doing here? I just need you to hear me out, please. Yes, I took those pictures and I wanted to sell them to pay my mom's medical bills, but I just couldn't. I'm ashamed that I even planned to, and I'm sorry. I'm here to delete them in front of you. You will never see or hear of these pictures again. Just as he was about to, I ran forward and stopped him. No, don't. I'd like to have them. They're some of my best memories. And thank you for everything you did for me. Your mom's bills will be taken care of. No, that's not why I'm here. I know that, Andre. I know. Now, would you care to have a dance with the princess? Most young men are dying to, but I can spare a few minutes for you. Can I even say no? Mm, not really. It's a royal order. 